All right, back again, Luke here. And as you can see in front of you, this is that old Amiga 500 that I wound up getting from Mooney about two years ago, as well as some of these games that I got from Duzang. Now, probably the last time I had this thing out was maybe six months or a year ago, and uh, I went and plugged this thing in, had it hooked up to my TV, and it was displaying an image, but it was displaying it in black and white, and there were only two games I think I had, so I couldn't really test this thing too much as far as the drive went. It wanted to play one game, but it didn't want to play the other one, so I'm not sure. I really don't know a whole lot about these Amigas and what their faults are, or what they uh, normally, which parts go bad on them, but... At that point in time, I put it away, didn't really think about it too much, but I uh, had quite a few, uh, you know, people asking like, hey, what about that Amiga? You know, it's been a long time. Where's the Amiga? Amiga. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I got to get back on that thing. So I went online probably a month or so ago, and I wound up ordering uh, this part here, and that is an Amiga. It's an actual original Amiga RGB to VGA converter. And that little part there is quite expensive. Uh, I was really surprised. It cost me about $50, I think, just for that adapter. But it came in maybe a couple of weeks ago or so, and uh, I had been meaning to get this thing out. It was up in the top part of the closet, so I had to do some digging, but got it out here and uh, got out the power supply. As you can see over here, this is the power supply hooked up to the adapter for this. have my Sega Genesis Sega Mega Drive controller here as well as the cable if you notice the cable here this is run all the way up here to my Sega Blast City and the main reason why I use the Blast City is because this Amiga it needs a 15 kilohertz monitor and I don't have any 15 kilohertz monitors except for maybe my Sharp X68000 but I didn't want, really want to experiment with it uh, didn't want anything to happen because that, that monitor over there is really expensive and it's hard to come by so if anything happened to it I would really be uh, out of luck but I decided to use the Blast City one this thing has just been really reliable I've used it for all sorts of stuff and uh, it's never let me down since but plug that in there flip the switch since it's a tri-sync monitor it puts out 15 24 and 31 kilohertz so it can be used for a variety of different games as well as some speakers these used to be USB speakers, but what I did is I cut the ends off and uh, spliced in some um, sound sound jacks for here, some AV jacks, I suppose, uh, for the left and right channel. And I also, uh, for the power, I wound up using an old Game Boy Advance power supply, which puts out the correct voltage for it. So that's the uh, that's the crazy setup as of right now. This thing does uh, play some games, but it doesn't really play a lot of games. And I'm wondering if that's a problem with the the disk drive itself or if it's a problem with the disks so if anyone out there is uh, you know who owns one of these Amigas and knows exactly what things go wrong with it or what it's uh, picky about uh, that would be really nice to know because I'm not sure at this point if it is the drive or if it's the disk or if it's a combination of the two I do know that the drive spindle here is cracked and uh, it was something that I tried to glue back together to keep it uh, in place but that's about it, and um, yeah, so it does play some of these games, at least for the, the demo or the intro. I realized that I'm going to need probably a mouse for this, because some games actually say, like, hit the left button on the mouse, or, you know, use the mouse, have the mouse plugged in. And I have this plugged in for the, you know, the controller, and I've only been able to get one game to actually start up, and that was, uh, what was it? I think it was Nebulous was the only one that started up so I could uh, use the controller here but everything else just yeah haven't been able to get it running so I'm not sure but I figure today we'll let you take a look at it and see what it's doing and let's go from there here's the power for the monitor turn that on and we have our power switch here this is the uh, the on off switch for this so we'll turn on our power supply and we'll turn on this there's our power and there's our workbench and like I said nebulous seems to work so we'll put this one in there it does take a couple of times here for these discs to start up I think yeah that's uh, this is pretty common at least what I've found it's pretty common for each disc when I stick it in Sometimes they don't even want to spin. Hmm. Yeah, 
and I'm guessing it must be the drive that's bad because it will start some of the games and then some of the games it won't so yeah discrete error yeah it didn't do a discrete error last time so I'm not sure really not sure what's going on with this thing um, like I said, if somebody out there, uh, for those of you guys out there who do have an Amiga, if it is a common problem, that would be kind of cool to know. That way, uh, or if there's any replacement um, drives that can just be popped in there, like in a regular floppy drive can be used or not. It'd be cool to know. Last time this thing did work, so. But it's just not very reliable, so that's the. Yeah. Hmm. Let's try it one more time. Nope. Okay. So that's not working this time. <laughs> it was working the time before. Let's try some of these other games. I've gone through quite a few of them, but they just did not want to want to load up. I know that some of them say like one and two. I'm guessing those are like. So this isn't Lemmings two. Maybe that's. The second disc for Lemmings. I'm not so sure. Speedball 2, Switchblade 2. I know one thing that it will play, and that is it will play Shadow of the Beast. At least the intro it'll play, so. When it wants to, hopefully it'll do something. Yeah. But it sounds awesome. As you can see here, it is starting up, but. I don't know if it's going to go any further than this, though, because last time it didn't seem to want to do that. Yeah, you can kind of hear it. Okay, blank screen. Is that for disc 2, or does that just mean it's dead? <laughs> I'm really not sure. Okay, software failure. Okay, I guess that probably, yeah. Not sure, not too sure about this one, guys. So, as you can see, though, it is somewhat trying to play some of these games. Um, and sometimes it'll do the title here. It doesn't seem to want to read. Oh, well, maybe it'll read our type. We can try that. Let's see if it'll do it. Alright, well it seems to be doing that. That is kind of motion sickness at its best right there. Let's see. Let's try and press button. Okay. Use mouse to select. Okay, well, I don't have the mouse. So, how do we start it? <laughs> so, yeah, as far as that goes, I think maybe some of these games mice must need the mouse. Um, yeah, because I can't uh, can't scroll down either. So, hmm. Yeah, but for some of these games, it seems like it wants to play them. Some other games, it seems like it just wants to uh, kind of hiccup and throw up a lot of errors. So I'm guessing. I don't know about the life of these discs, like what is the actual lifespan of these discs as far as discs that are new or discs that are copied. Maybe you guys out there know a little bit more about this than I do. And um, yeah, what I'm probably going to be looking forward to or what I'm going to have to look out for when it comes to these discs when uh, the age hits them. I know that's for the X68000, those can lose their magnetism over time. They do eventually start to not read or just lock up, as well as the Famicom discs for the Famicom disc system. But yeah, I'm not sure about these. Normally the ones that I have for the Famicom disc system or the ones that are made for the X68000, those seem to be, they're all original, so they're not copied disc or anything. And I heard somebody saying something about double density and the high density discs and how there was a difference between those for the Amiga, so I'm not sure. Let's see if this one does anything. Oh, that one does. Okay. Zippo games. Hmm. 
Hmm. Seems to be all it does. That's kind of odd. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we'll just uh, put that there and <laughs> put that one aside. I did see a couple other ones, like maybe Pac-Man, I think, was in here. That looked like maybe one that might want to play. Also, for these uh, two-disc ones, it'd be kind of cool if you guys knew what the correct loading procedure was with these. I noticed that some of the controls or some of the buttons on the Amiga, they seem to... Like, sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't, so... Let's see. Where is the... Other one. Shadow of the Beast. There was one around here that actually said, like, uh... I think it said... Pac-Man or something, but... I probably passed it a couple of times. So you drive in force. There it is, Pac-Mania. Try this one. Okay, well that came up. Let's see. hear it kind of squealing around in there. Oh, okay, well we got a title screen, that's good. And, let's see. Try and start the game. Move stick to select world and push bounce button to start. Okay, bounce button, huh. Alright, well, can't seem to select anything, can't move up or down. So let's just try this one. Okay, well. Let's have fun with Pac Man. Let's go to Blocktown. Woo! Seems like a pretty cool game if, it, uh, if it's like Pac Man 3D. See if it loads. <laughs> Is it gonna load? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Huh. Okay. So, yeah guys, looks like that's where we're at with the old Amiga, <laughs> as far as this goes. Seems like at some points it wants to play some games to an extent, but when it comes down to trying to get into the game, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do it, doesn't follow through, so I might have to pick up another disk drive for it. If you guys know where to look or where to get those, that would be pretty cool. And uh, any other information as far as like some of the problems with the Amiga, some things that should be looked out for um, or taken care of when it comes to the system here that'd be cool to know but yeah that's about all for me for right now like always I'll put up another video here soon so thanks for watching hmm. Hmm. 
they're going to start up. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Seems to keep going back and forth to a different screen, doesn't it? Not really showing any promise here. Do 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 do. Well, I managed to get another game up and running here, at least for the music. Some awesome music. It took about, I don't know, six tries to get it going, but really, really nice. Maybe I'll just turn this into a BGM part of the game, <laughs> or the video. See if we can, uh, maybe we can do a little bit of gameplay. I don't know. I don't have any tape to keep this thing up there, so we'll have to see if it holds up. Let's give it a go.
Alright, so here we are in the game, which the controller is not working. <laughs> so, I'm guessing it's gonna be the keypad? Buttons? Nope. <laughs> so, unfortunately, cannot show you guys any moving around on this one. Yep, nothing. <laughs> Well, nonetheless, just want to show you guys a little bit of uh, an intro of what this thing is doing. At least it's got uh, it's got some potential to it. It's got some seriously awesome music, though. I'm uh, I'm totally blown away by the music on this. It's fantastic. I didn't think that the Amigo, you know, I, I never could have imagined that the system could put out such awesome music like this. Just beautiful sounds and the stereo sound effects. Just wow. Awesome. So yeah, we're gonna have to try and do some stuff here in the future to get this thing to play as well as getting a couple of controllers or so because um, yeah, it's just too awesome not to play. So nonetheless, uh, if you guys stuck on this long then I uh, appreciate you guys taking a look at this and yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon so thanks for watching and listening.